Hey guys, welcome to Dog Shala. So in the series of NEAT MDS 2022 recall, we are going to see about a video of Dentigida cyst from the subject oral medicine and pathology. This is Dr. Janvi. So let's just begin with the topic. So a Dentigida cyst. So I think most of you all are familiar what a Dentigida cyst is. It is not very new to you, but you have to remember a very few important points over this Dentigida cyst by heart to answer any kind of question that is arising in the exams. Okay, so and it is also a very important question when you are coming to your board exams. So a Dentigida cyst is also known as follicular cyst. It is an epithelial line developmental cyst. So dentigida cyst is a developmental cyst that is formed that is an uh, lined by an epithelium. It is formed by accumulation of the fluid between the reduced enamel epithelium and crown of an unerupted tooth. So it is most commonly associated with the unerupted tooth. So and it is formed by accumulation of a fluid between the reduced enamel epithelium and the unerupted tooth. Okay. So as you can see in the picture here, so this is a tooth, right, which is not erupted yet. Okay, so this is the surface epithelium and this is the dental lamina. So this is the developing tooth follicle. Okay, so you can see a cystic cavity being formed in between the surface epithelium, dental lamina and the developing tooth follicle. So this is what we call as dentigerous cyst. Okay, so it is the second most common form of benign developmental odontogenic cyst. So this is also important. Please keep that in mind. Then coming to the clinical features. So the clinical features which are commonly involved are it involves a single tooth as we have seen and rarely affects multiple teeth. So the most commonly involved teeth are the mandibular third molar followed by the maxillary canine but they may be associated with any supernumerary or ectopic teeth any permanent teeth can be involved but teeth may be displaced into the ectopic positions also that means it may be displaced into the positions uh, other than the other than the normal position okay so in the maxilla it is often uh, displaced into the maxillary sinus because this is uh, where the cavity is uh, hollow right uh, so when the cavity is hollow the uh, because of the pressure that it is creating it is easy for the tooth to move into a hollow place rather than moving into any other position right so when the teeth is moving displaced into the maxillary sinus there are some classic symptoms which are associated with it which involve headache facial pain purulent nasal discharge or nasolacrimal obstruction so which uh, which occur when the maxillary sinus is involved okay so it is most commonly seen in second and third decades of life this is important and males have been reported to be more prevalent okay so with the ratio of 1.8 is to 1 okay so these are all very important points please keep them in mind or note them somewhere so that you can remember them easily okay then coming to the spread so once the uh, cyst is formed it has to spread right so it has to spread into the surrounding areas so how it involves so first of all it involves the alveolar bone associated with the tooth then the displacement of the tooth will occur then root resorption of the tooth will occur and expansion of buccal and lingual cortex and pay and uh, uh the as a sequel of that we get a pain okay so these are all the areas where it spreads and causes pain okay then coming to the complications it involves it involves cellulitis sometimes deep neck infection since it is mostly involved with mandibular third molar right then ameloblastoma and also epidermoid carcinoma or mucoepidermoid carcinoma but this is a benign lesion okay but it might complicate into these all infections too okay so let's just see the histopathology so the histopathology is dependent on the nature of the cyst so whether it is inflamed or not inflamed okay so inflamed or not inflamed depending upon the inflammation the histopathology of the cyst varies so these are the two diagrams showing the inf uh, inflamed and not inflamed lesions so let's just uh, see about a non-inflamed 
histopathology of dentigerous dentigerocyst so as you can see the image here this represents the non inflamed so you can see there is no inflammation associated so loosely arranged fibrous connective tissue wall that contains considerable glycosaminoglycan ground substances seen so this you can appreciate here right then small islands or cords of inactive appearing odontogenic epithelial rests are usually scattered within the connective tissue and most commonly located near the epithelial lining so small islands or cords of connective tissue can be seen okay so epithelial lining is composed of two to four layers of flattened non keratinized cells with a flat epithelium and a connective tissue interface so as you can see here flattened epithelial cells are seen okay keep this uh, diagram in your mind coming to the inflamed dentigerous cyst so here more collagenized fibrous connective tissue wall is seen okay so as you can see it is really very uh, uh it has very distinct uh, remarks uh, compared to the inflamed non inflamed version right with variable infiltration of chronic inflammatory cells so you can see here the epithelium and connective epith uh, the connective tissue is mostly collagenized right so the cholesterol slits and their associated multinucleated giant cells may be present and are generally associated with the connective tissue wall so these are the cholesterol slits that are present okay the cyst is lined mostly or entirely by non keratinized squamous epithelium which display varying amounts of hyperplasia with the development of anastomosing proteges and more definite squamous features okay so this is the most important thing of the inflamed version of the dentigerous cyst then coming to the uh, other parts so focal areas of mucus cells or rarely ciliated columnar cells are also seen may be found in the epithelial lining so these are the mucus cells okay so in addition small nests of sebaceous cells infrequently may be present within the connective tissue okay so these can also be seen okay then coming to the radiography so radiography it appears as a unilocular radiolucent area radiolucent area is nothing but it is appearing as a darker dark lesion okay that is associated with just the crown of an an erupted tooth and is attached to the tooth at the cemento enamel junction okay so that you can see here so this is the dentigerous cyst and it is associated to the tooth at the cemento enamel junction right so radiolucency is generally well defined and well corticated as you can see this see here also in this uh, opg so the radiolucency often have a sclerotic border indicating bony reaction but a secondarily infected cyst may display ill defined borders okay then coming to the variants which we can observe in radiographs so there are three variants which are radiographic variants of dentigerous cyst they are central variant lateral variant and circumferential variant so the central variant is the most common one okay the cyst surrounds the crown of the tooth and the crown projects into the cyst so when we are coming to the tooth like this so the cystic cavity is surrounding the crown of the tooth like this okay so this is the central variant this variant then when coming to the lateral variant so the lateral variant is usually associated with a mesioangular impacted mandibular third molar so that is partially erupted the cyst develops laterally along the root surface and partially surrounds the crown so how does this look so laterally along the root surface and also partially along the crown so partial crown and lateral along the root surface something like this then coming to the circumferential variant so here the cyst surrounds the crown and extends from some distance along the root surface so that a significant portion of the root appears to lie within the cyst okay so as of the tooth was erupting through the center of the cyst okay so this is how it looks so when we come to the cyst how does it look almost the entire uh, thing is into the cyst so it appears as if it is developing from the cyst okay so here you can see in the image 
here. So this is the central variant. So here is the radiograph of the central variant. And this is the lateral variant involving the crown and partially the root surface. So here is the radiograph depicting it. And this is the circumferential. So here is the circumferential thing. Okay. Then coming to the treatment and prognosis. So the treatment of choice is enucleation along with the extraction of the impacted teeth. So entire, the cyst, entire cyst is removed along with the tooth that is involved is also removed. So the prognosis is excellent and the recurrence is rare. Okay. So this is what we need to know about the dentigitous cyst. Keep in mind all the points. Okay. So the question they have asked in the previous uh, NEAT MDS exam was, so dentigitous cyst arises from, and the options, options given were, Anerupted teeth, teeth with root caries, irritated PDL cells, that is periodontal ligament cells, and osteomyelitis. So, as you know, dentigerous cyst arises from the unerupted teeth. So, option A is the correct answer. So, if you like our video, do like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on our Instagram handles at Dogshala for dental content and at Dogshala Medical for medical content. You can also follow us on Telegram. Thank you.